Welcome to another NetworkComs.net tutorial. This time we're going to show you just how easy it can be to create a client server application in five simple steps. Everything we're going to cover in this short video is also available in the tutorial section on our website. All you need to get started is Visual Studio 2010 Express or later and that should come with at least .NET 4. Are you ready? Step 1 is to create the Visual Studio projects. Open Visual Studio, select File, New, Project. We're going to create a Visual C Sharp console application and we're going to name it Client Application. We're then also going to call the solution itself Client Server Example. Press OK. This is the project we're going to use for the client application. We also need to add another project that's going to be the server application. So right click on the solution, follow out across to new project. We're going to add another Visual C Sharp console application and we're going to name it server application. Step two is to add the networkcoms.net DLL to both projects. To do that, open your browser Go to our website www.networkcoms.net, go to the download section and download either the complete or core DLL from the current stable version. We want to save that directly into the solution folder. Once it's downloaded, go back to Visual Studio and right click on the references label within the client application project. Select add reference. Browse to the DLL we just downloaded, select it, press OK, and then do exactly the same thing for the server application project. And you should now see that both projects reference networkcoms.net. Step 3 is where we add the necessary implementation to the client application. In Visual Studio, right click on the program.cs and select Open. In order to save time, I'm going to steal the source code from the article version of this tutorial. So via the tutorial section on the website, how to create a client server application in minutes. Copy and paste. So to talk you through the source code, the client application starts by requesting the server IP import reads that into a string and then passes that string into an IP address and port. Because of the way in which we pass this information, only IPv4 addresses will work, but for the purpose of this example that's probably okay. We create a variable loop counter and then within a while loop we create a message to send that is this is message followed by the current value of the loop counter. We write that message to the console window and then the only line that's actually required to send anything is networkcoms.send object. The first parameter is message. This is the packet type that will be used to send the string. The second parameter is the server IP, then the port number, followed by the actual string that we would like to send. We then write another line to the local console that asks the user to press Q to quit or any other key to send another message. We read in the key the user pressed, and if the key was Q, we break. Otherwise, we increment the loop counter and send another message. Once the user decides to leave the client application by pressing Q, we finish by calling networkcoms.shutdown, and then we close the client application. Step four is where we add the implementation for the server application. So within Visual Studio, within the server application project, open the file program.cs. And then again, to save time, I'm going to take the source code from the article version of this tutorial. So explaining the server source code, the first line is networkcoms.append global incoming packet handler. The first parameter here in the brackets is string. This is because we expect a string object to be received. 
the packet type that we expect to receive the object with this message. And should network comms receive this packet type, we want it to trigger the message print incoming message. Looking at that method, it takes three parameters. We've got packet header, connection, and the message itself. And all it does is write a line to the console, which says where the message came from and what the message said. Back in the main method, after append global incoming packet handler, we then call TCP connection dot start listening with a parameter true. This allows network comms.net to pick up new incoming connections and the true parameter forces network comms to select a random port should the default be unavailable. The next two lines just print out which local IP addresses and ports were selected for listening. We then write to the console to say press any key to close the server, followed by a console.read key. So on the server, should the user press any key whatsoever, we'll then trigger network comms.shutdown and the application will finish. The fifth and final step is where we test the applications we've just created. In order to run the executables, we first have to build the solution. Right click on the solution file in Visual Studio and left click on build solution. The result should be Visual Studio telling you that the build succeeded in the bottom left hand corner. If on the other hand you've ended up with some errors appearing in the errors list, then please go back through the tutorial and make sure that you've correctly performed every step. Once the solution is built, we can right click on the server application project and then left click on open folder in Windows Explorer. Then open the folder bin and within that the folder debug. Within there you should see the executable server application.exe which we can open by double clicking on it. If at this stage you get a firewall notification, it's important that you give the application the necessary privileges in order to run. Obviously, if the application doesn't get the correct privileges, it may not work. We now want to open an instance of the client application in the same way. So right click on the client application project and left click on open folder in Windows Explorer. And then again, bin and debug. And then open an instance of the client application by double clicking clientapplication.exe. We now bring both applications to the front and the client application is requesting that we enter an IP address for the server. Looking at the server application output, we can see that there's several IP addresses that are available to us. The best one to choose is most likely the local loopback IP address, which starts 127.0.0. .0. Obviously, that's only going to work if both applications are running on the same computer. So in the client application, we enter 127.0.0.1, followed by colon, and then port 10,000, because that's the port the server is listening on, and then press enter. The client then sends its first message to the server, which is this is message number one, which the server outputs, as you can see here. In the client, if we now press any other key except Q, we can continuously send new messages, as you can see here, which are then repeated by the server. Once we're finished with the client, we can press Q to close it, and then likewise with the server, any other key, and the server application closes. If you've successfully made it this far, you've managed to create a client-server application in under 10 minutes. If you have had any problems, please see the article version of this tutorial on our website and you can download a working example to have a play with. We certainly hope you found this tutorial useful. Please check out our other tutorials as well for more advanced examples. If you have any questions or feedback, we'd love to hear from you on our website or our forums. Thank you very much.